Thank you for the introduction. I do want to thank everybody, the organizers for putting together this event. It's great that we can still have this virtual events where we can learn from each other and help advance the technology. Um, all right, um, I'd like to start um, with a note on integrated chips, the ICs. Uh, the integration of electronics changed the world. Um, it revolutionized the world that we live in today. Uh, photonics integration will change the world again, and we will see our world revolutionized again. Um, photonics ICs, what we commonly hear, it's being referred to as the PICS, will become the future engine of many of our future products. And I personally find it exciting to see the diversity of applications that the photonic integration can impact. Today, telecom and datacom speed is limited by microelectronic um, and uh, photonic ICs can operate at much higher frequencies. So they can handle much more data per channel and photonic microchips are capable of very high speeds and can efficiently replace these electronic uh, chips that we have in place right now. Uh, similarly, there are going to be disruptive sensing solutions using the photonic devices, as you see appearing in many other sectors, such as healthcare, medical applications, um, autonomous driving, with aerospace and aviation, and uh, consumer electronics, and, and many more. Today, I'd like to introduce you to Smart Photonics. Um, I'll be talking about indium phosphide platform, why you should be considering it if you're not using it already. Um, so I'll discuss the advantages of indium phosphide over other platforms, such as silicon photonics and silicon nitride. And um, we'll look at a few examples of applications that indium phosphide can enable and the services we at Smart Photonics offer. And I'll wrap it up with any questions you may have for me at the end. Smart Photonics is an independent pure play foundry um, for indium phosphide based photonic components. And as a pure play foundry, um, we are 100% focused on manufacturing for our customers rather than producing our own components. Um, so in essence, we don't compete with our customers because there is no conflict of interest. And as a company, this puts us in a very unique position in the industry because our customers don't have to worry about their IP. They can count on our expertise to help them develop a product. Um, this is from inception, um, conception of the product, the feasibility stage, um, prototyping, all the way up to high volume manufacturing. Uh, Smart Photonics has a long history in photonics uh, coming from University in Phillips. It has strong foundation in two main pillars being research and manufacturing. Um, uh, from 2012, we started growing as a separate entity where we started production, we expanded our tool base, we grew our team, and we expanded our manufacturing facility. And for those of you following the news, earlier this year, we secured a 35 million euro investment and were recognized as Europe's leading independent foundry for integrated photonics. Our plan going forward is to increase their capacity by tenfold. We have state-of-the-art tool sets, our own fabrication facility, and over 750 years of combined photonics and wafer manufacturing experience. We do our own epitaxy. For epitaxy, for instance, we offer growth, regrowth, overgrowth. Um, we can do a bud joint integration, for instance, that will offer no compromise between active and passive components, which I'll get into in a little bit um, in the following slides. Um, and there's obviously on this slide, there's a great deal of detail in terms of our tool set and the capability that we have. Um, our tool, uh, the one tool that I'd like to highlight on this slide is our RF scanner tool, um, the little tool. It's one of the state-of-the-art tools because not only can it produce high resolution features below 100 nanometer, it does it at a very high throughput of about 100 wafers per hour. Um, with the rest of the services and the capabilities we have, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me afterwards. I'd be happy to answer your questions. At Smart Photonics, we have developed a mature manufacturing platform. 
and this is ready for use. Um, this is obviously helpful in reducing the development cost and the time to market. But if um, you've got a solution that requires customization of this platform, that's also something that's um, open to you. Our team will work with you to determine how to best customize the process that is required for your specific um, project. Let's talk about technologies and the platforms that's available to create PICs, these photonic integrated circuits. In electronics, the ICs, we had a, lot, a set of components. Similarly, in photonics, we have access to a set of components to create these things. Here you see a cartoonish cross-section of some of these components from SOAS, phase modulators, shallow and deep edge waveguides, and polarizers. And down below, I've got the micrograph of some of these um, components. What you're seeing in this table is a set of generic building blocks that's required to create a device, um, a PIC. Um, you've got lasers, modulators, switches, optical amplifiers, detectors, and passive components. What you'll notice is indium phosphide is able to offer superior performance in all of these building blocks except for these passive components. And that's because indium phosphide has got um, higher loss when it comes to uh, passive components compared to the other two platforms being silicon photonics and silicon nitride. Um, the other thing you'll notice here, as I'm sure you already know, is for both silicon photonics and silicon nitride, you'll have a hybrid, you'll need to have a hybrid or a heterogeneous technology. Why? Well, because silicon um, photonics and silicon nitride, these platforms, these materials don't lace, whereas indium phosphide laces. So you can make lasers, you can make optical amplifiers using indium phosphide. And um, what this will enable you is to have a monolithic integration of all of your components in one platform if you were to use the indium phosphide. Again, um, there are um, options to mix and match different platforms to take advantage of different um, performance, but um, there are obviously costs and benefits to it. When we look at a passive component, um, all of the three platforms um, can be suitable. So indium phosphide, silicon, and the triplex, the silicon nitride um, can make that happen. But the switches and modulators can only be manufactured in indium phosphide and silicon photonics. And um, lasers can only be manufactured using indium phosphide. Um, there are obviously a lot of options available when you're looking at lasers from SOAS, uh, Petro, Petro, um, Petro uh, lasers, tunable lasers, DBRs, DFBs, multi-wavelength lasers, um, and pulse lasers, as an example. In the last slide, you, um, I showed you schematic of these building block components. And here I've got some actual micrographs of indium phosphide-based PICs in hosts of different applications. You can see the diversity of the applications from terahertz and RF circuits, optical and data handling, optical switching, as uh, I said, variety of lasers, medical and bio application. Um, you can have sensor and readout units and fiber to home. Uh, the graph I'm showing here is denoting the growth of silicon photonics and indium phosphide for just the transceiver market, telecom, uh, datacom. Um, the indium phosphide photonic market has been particularly driven by these industries, by datacom and telecom applications. Indium phosphide isn't new, it's been dominating the transceiver market, and as you see, it's continuing to do so in the coming years being the preferred platform of the technology. What's worth noting here is that telecom and datacom industries do place very stringent requirements as they are driving these big technologies and big research. And when you think about other established photonic markets, uh, for instance, the fiber sensor readout unit, medical diagnostics, metrology, and many others, there are immense opportunities to leverage what's been matured on the indium phosphide PIC technology for other uh, technologies and applications. 
As I mentioned, historically, Datacom and Telecom has been the most important driver of the technology. But when you look at the outlook, the industry um, of, of the Indian phosphide industry, this Telecom Datacom is only representing about a third of the anticipated growth and the potential market. Two thirds of the growth is associated with other applications, be it LiDAR, um, sensors, um, medical applications, and you even have a section for just um, optical coherence tomography imaging here. Don't worry about reading the whole slide. I don't expect you to be reading all that says here. A um, Couple of things to highlight is that this is a snippet from a 2019 um, global pick report. And here they're also recognizing the Indian phosphide as the most advanced platform for higher performing picks um, with impacts on applications from higher performance, um, the lower cost, the smaller size, the lower weight, and the smaller power consumption that it will enable. Now let's talk about cost. Cost is always an interesting topic to talk about. Um, very often I hear people talking about the cost comparison of silicon and indium phosphide substrate. Yes, indium phosphide substrate is more expensive than silicon, but over 80% of the cost of a device is in packaging, assembly, and testing. You're looking at roughly less than 20% of the cost being associated to wafer manufacturing. And of this 20%, the wafer substrate cost is very insignificant, especially when you consider the additional advantages that indium phosphide offers, as well as the associated cost saving, because you're looking at a, you're working with a monolithically manufactured chip. Let's talk about some of the applications that indium phosphide enables and the services that we offer at Smart Photonics. We talked about the host of applications um, that indium phosphide can be used for. And here I've got a few case studies um, with enabling 5G sensing within aerospace and enabling fiber to home. And I'm listing some of the design challenges, whether it's the temperature that it needs to meet, uh, for instance, in this case, from minus 40 degrees all the way up to 85 degrees, um, whether it's um, alternate technology or um, platform is too large, too fragile, um, or it's not compact enough, or it's not low cost enough. Um, or the power consumptions are not ideal. Um, within the Indium Phosphide platform at Smart Photonics, um, we are able to address uh, these design challenges. Now, if I were to categorize the services we offer at Smart Photonics, um, here's what I would say, the four categories of services. The discrete components, and um, it's just individual building blocks that we talked about earlier or you can have combination of some of these discrete components um, or go for the full-on pick. Um, obviously, if you're going for either one of the first two, you can be combining it with other platforms, be it silicon nitride or uh, silicon photonics platforms. Now here, one thing to highlight is the uh, MPW, or what's uh, called the multi-project wafer. Um, with this, you can um, essentially have different projects, different companies, have a small area of the wafer, and um, this will help with the costs associated. This is a very low threshold access for new technologies and smaller companies. And a fun fact, Smart Photonics was the first uh, commercial foundry to offer MPW services. And we originally started with four times a year, and we've now increased the service to six times per year for our customers. Now, I recognize that not everybody has in-house design capability and expertise in-house um, before coming to a manufacturing partner. We have a design manual with description of the building blocks, the functional building blocks that we offer. And we also work with a number of companies that can offer simulation and mass design. And here I'm putting the spotlight on some of the high software companies that we work with um, that offer circuit simulation or mask design. If you have any questions with regards to this, again, I'd be happy to point you in the right direction to have you speak to the right person to answer your questions. Now, 
in summary, um, we talked about why we're talking about photonics, the advantages that integration offers, and we compared some of the different platforms for manufacturing picks, um, the advantages of using an indium phosphide platform over silicon photonics and silicon nitride. And I hope the potential and the advantages of the platform is evident through some of the examples that I've shown and the projections from some of the reports that's been uh, put together. Now at this point, I'd like to um, open the floor for any questions that there may be. And um, if you have any questions about my presentation or if you're just generally stuck, don't know where to start, um, please do reach out. I'm happy to help out. Again, put you either in touch with the right person or um, the, put you in the right direction to get your answers. Um, and here's my contact information.